Welcome to the Home Ownership Podcast presented by Momentum Realty, located in Hanover, Massachusetts. This series covers all things real estate and the best practices for buying, selling, and owning properties. Now here's your host, Sean Maloney. Welcome to episode 115, Preparing Your Home for an Open House. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Maloney. Thanks for joining me this week. This week, I want to talk to you about preparing your home for one of the most important days of your life, and that is the open house. Because remember, clean houses show best. Make sure to do a deep cleaning before inviting guests to an open house. The open house is a very important time, especially right now in COVID times where a lot of people are doing open house style showings only. It's important during that one view that you get the maximum potential out of that one view. A lot of people take it lightly. They run out of the house and they just figure people are going to go through. I want to talk to you today about some different things you can do to make sure you get the most money and the most offers from your open house. The best bang for your buck. First off, let's talk about the day of. The day of, one thing I want to remind you of is leave early. Get out of there ahead of time. Don't be trying to run around 30 minutes before the open house to clean the place up. Get out of the house and relax. You've already made it to the point where it's time now to go. Let's talk about some different important things. First off, securing your valuables in a safe place. When inviting the public in, it's better safe than sorry. What are valuables? Everything from diamond rings and money to items such as prescription medications. Remember, you're going to be bringing people into your home that you do not know. The agent is gonna be doing their best, of course, to be watching people at the front door, making sure no one's leaving with things, but there are plenty of things inside a home. iPods, AirPods, every single little thing we have that costs money. It's important to make sure all the most expensive ones are secure. And if you have guns and ammo, ammunition, Make sure, make sure, make sure those guns and ammunition are set aside and taken care of properly because it's a lot of liability to put on the public and the real estate agent to be leaving those things around. I am a licensed to carry a firearm person here in Massachusetts and I still don't like to see firearms or ammunition around when I'm going to an open house. I want to make sure that that stuff's in a safe, locked away, and possibly even just a cloth or something hiding that safe. That way there, it's not an attractor because some people are very anti-gun and it may offend them so much that they want to leave the home. Drugs, the other hand, those are something that you want to make sure you secure. There's a lot of people that are willing to open somebody's medicine cabinet and take those hard drug pills, whether it be Oxycontin all the way down to anti-anxiety medicines. Those are the things that people may come in and try to take. Again, the agent's going to do their best to make sure that doesn't happen, but please do your best to make sure you don't put them in a situation where they need to watch out that that doesn't happen. Now we opened it up by talking about cleaning. You want to do a really deep cleaning. Cleaning the floors, the windows, the walls, anything and everything, the bathroom, everywhere. Remember, these people are coming in to look at the house. They want to see what it's like. If the oven is dirty, right? The oven is included. If you're going to include the refrigerator, maybe you should clean the refrigerator. You want to make sure when they go in, it's the best presentation. And cleaning doesn't just stop with physical cleaning. It also goes into organization. When you properly organize everything inside of shelves, inside of closets, cabinets, all those types of places, it gives a far greater appearance of space. If you have your shelves and drawers and all that completely stocked full, it can make the place look like there isn't enough storage space and that gives the person the idea the reason you're leaving is there's not enough storage space at the home. Make sure to organize everything in a way that it makes sense to the person's mind, whether it be color, by size, by shape, by alphabet, whatever works best to organize it, organize it in a great fashion so people can see the highest and best use for the home. Some other things you can do in the cleaning process is pseudo staging type items like getting cut flowers, cooking cookies inside the house. You can clearly do things like candles and such, but don't go too smelly. When people go and they put Febreze everywhere or they do stuff like that, it sometimes make buyers say, geez, I wonder what kind of smell they're covering up. So when we do these open houses, it's okay for the place to smell nice. It's okay to have a candle. It's okay to have maybe fresh baked cookies. But if you're running around the house with a can of some cleaning product and just spraying it so that you get that smell, it is going to turn certain people off because remember, ultimately, they're going to think something's going on that makes you want to make that smell differently. Make sure when you're going to have the open house that day, if your agent does it fine, if you do it fine, but make sure to turn on all the lights, 
open the blinds and get the place light and airy. If it's a warm day out, we want to turn that air conditioner on. If it's a cold day out, we want to turn that heat on. What temperature do we want to turn it to? We don't want to treat it like normal where we're trying to save money. We want to turn it to in the summertime, probably 68 so it feels cold. In the wintertime, probably somewhere around 72, 74 so it feels warm. When somebody walks in a house and you just have the thermostat down, it feels cold, they figure it must be drafty. In the wintertime, that's a big concern of a lot of buyers. So making the place warmer and making them be able to feel that it is capable of being warm is important. Remember, a lot of people ask us, how much is the heating bill or how much is the cooling bill? It's all relative to the temperature you keep, but during this time, it is worth the investment to have the place correctly heated or cooled so that people can feel that the systems work and they work well and that there aren't drafts places because when it's warm like that you'll feel a draft if it's a real draft instead of feeling a cold spot just because the owner didn't feel like heating the home because they didn't want to spend the money if it's a nice day out you can certainly open the windows like it is right now in the springtime it's a perfect day to open the windows but honestly most of the time we like to use the temperature climate control systems to show them off that day to show how nice they work and to get people the idea that they have air conditioning or that they have central heat all the while working on all these things remember you're not always able to do everything but each and every step that you can do is gonna do you the favor of getting you more offers and getting you more money for your home because it's gonna attract more people to make that. And it's also gonna save you when it comes to the idea of putting away valuables or the prescription drugs, saving you that problem that could happen in the future. Not to say that it will, but it's nothing worse than to leave and then to find out that something's missing and to be trying to figure out who did it. Sometimes when we're doing just private showings and things, it's easy to figure out where it come from the problem. But right now with huge open houses, massive lines, 15 minute appointments, everyone wearing a mask, it is very difficult to say, okay, this person did it because you risk actually falsely accusing somebody just based on a timeline or based on a suspicion where if you don't know, it's really difficult to find out. Now let's go outside. Outside's one of the things that is kind of shocking to me often. Outside, we pull up to a property, we have an unmowed lawn. We have leaves gone. We have weeds in the beds. We have overgrown bushes. We have pool areas that aren't cleaned like power washed. You want to set that place up as much as you possibly can to be brand new. Now, mind you, I understand some of you out there aren't going to do anything. More power to you. Just don't worry when you don't get the most money. You want to get the most money. You want to do the most things. Power washing, raking, blowing, cutting. These are all items that as long as you have a lawnmower, as long as you have a power washer, they're free other than your time, maybe a couple bucks worth of gasoline. But they're certainly worth the investment when it comes to attracting more home buyers. Do remember as well, when you invite people onto your property, when it comes to clearing snow, clearing leaves, making sure the place is safe, Inside of the contract, the listing agreement, it says that you, the owner, are responsible for making sure when we invite the public onto your property that it is set up and safe for them to enter. Making people trudge through snow, ice, leaves, all these things to get to your open house, number one, it's a good way to have someone get injured. Number two, it's a good way to get your house injured and the idea of when people are coming in and out of your house with snow, rock salt, leaves, all these things, it can really damage a house. Lots of times us agents will use shoe booties or we'll end up having the people take their sneakers off during times where it's raining, snowing, other things like that. But sometimes that's not always possible and other times when it's that icy and things like that, it ends up tracking into the mudroom or wherever you enter the house because it's tough to tell people take your shoes off outside the house during the winter time or other times like that. So remember, by doing a good job of cleaning all that up, by exposing the pavement out or the gravel driveway or whatever you have, you're going to find that more people will come in. In the winter time, remember, some people aren't that sure-footed. I've been to houses before with people where they just turned down the showing and said, we'll book some other time because I don't want to risk going up that driveway. It's not just older people. It's not just younger people. There are a lot of people, whether they have a handicap, whether they, even the sure-footed person maybe they're wearing the wrong type of shoes to be dealing with ice we don't want anyone to feel the least bit of hesitation when getting out of the car about coming into the home now last but not least let's talk a little bit about kids toys and sheds and things like that 
I understand everyone in the world has a lot of stuff, but remember, we do not want people to feel like our space is not ample. So it's time to purge, it's time to get rid of the things you don't need, and it's time to think about how to set the shed up and the yard up to look its best. If there's an old rickety swing set that needs to come down, if the buyers aren't gonna want it, take it down ahead of time. If there's an old pool and it's all dilapidated and everything, have it filled or remove it. If you're gonna sell it that way, realize it's perfectly fine to do so. Just remember that it's gonna have an economic impact on what you actually get offers for because the person's looking at it as a job they have to take on. And remember, when you see something, you say, okay, I could just do that myself and it'll only take a few minutes. You don't know the next buyer isn't going to hire a professional. When we hire professionals, things tend to cost anywhere from, say, two times to as much as 10 times as much money as they cost to do ourselves. And perceived value to buyers, a lot of times they actually think problems are a lot worse than they are. So you, the seller, getting that all set up before you invite them to the open house is gonna make a world of difference. Last but not least, agent, agent, agent. It really matters who your agent is and what type of work they're gonna put into the open house. It's time that you hire a great agent over here at Movementum Realty. One of our realtors would love to help you and guide you through the entire process. We call our agents Move Mentors because we look at them as a guide to buying, selling, and owning home. And it's really important when it comes to getting the right agent to know that they're putting in the proper practices to getting you the most amount of people for your open house as well as doing it safely and protecting your home and valuables. Thank you so much for listening this week. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and tell your friends and family about it. Check out our blog, weekly newsletter, as well as our Facebook group for more information. I hope you enjoyed this week and have a great week. I look forward to talking to you next week.